And welcome back to Across the Board with E and the Colonel here on Hawk Radio and Across the Board Radio.com. You can find us either either place, hawkradio.org there. One of my favorite bands of all time. Now, now, Colonel, you and I both grew up, you know, in the, I guess, late 80s, early 90s, you know. Right. And, you know, I... 90s alt rock is just true to my heart. You know, I mean, that's that's my favorite you know genre of music of all, t- all time. One of the innovators of 90s alt rock, one of the the legends of it, and one of just the, I guess the creators, the Godfathers would have to be yeah. yeah for sure would have to be Cracker and Johnny Hickman is with us right now. Johnny, how you doing today, man? Doing great, thank you very much. Uh, proud to be proud of, proud of the term Godfather. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, nobody's even gonna end up uh, sleeping with the fishes or anything, but you know, we'll <laughs> music for you. Hey, gotta do what you gotta do, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's true though. I mean, obviously, you know, you guys have been around for so long, and you know, such you know, it's quintessential songs, like you said, Colonel. Yeah. You know, uh, low, and you know, teen yeah, angst. Yeah, exactly. You know, Get everything. Off this is all They're, good songs. Sweet thistle, Sweet pie. thistle pie. There's yeah. so many. Yeah, you know, and kerosene hat is. There, there are some. Albums that you have to have to have to own if you consider yourself, you know, a nine, I guess like an alt rock or whatever uh, collector. Right. Kerosene Hat is for sure one of them. I would say Core by Stone Temple Pilots is another. Yes. But Kerosene, Kerosene Hat, Hat sure. absolutely is right in there. I mean, that's it's an album that seems to almost define '90s rock. Yeah. And and I'm telling you, it's. Every song on there is just a great track. Yeah, well, let's bring Johnny into the conversation. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, I mean, Johnny, how do you know? Do you guys still get that you're on tour right now? I know you're coming to our area this summer, but uh, I mean, do you guys still get that? There are a lot, are a lot of younger fans that are into you as well, or you know, is it uh, people who came up through the '90s? Happily, yeah, there are. Um, you know, I'm constantly and happily surprised when I see uh, people at the show, 19, 20, 21 years, years old. Right. Okay, you were born around the time we started. Right. And that's cool. And uh, you know, a lot of them find out about it, about a Cracker on their own. They they may hear a song or two. They go, oh, I think I've heard that on the radio. And then they explore a little farther and see that we're not exactly very spe- genre specific. And if they hear a song like Low sure. or right. Zero Trash Girl, they're going to hear a lot of variety once they start digging into the to the catalog of what we do. Um, and it's sort of been uh, at the the modus operandi since we since we started. When David and I started Cracker. We'd known each other for a long time. We knew each other before his previous band, Camper Van Beethoven. We were basically we were kids together, and our little fledgling bands. And we were sort of the two guys in our whole area of sort of, sort of southeastern California, sort of desert area, who were sort of doing things a little differently. And uh, at that time, it was all about hard rock, and it was all about uh, just the beginnings of punk rock. And we saw no reason not to mix, uh, you know, punk rock and uh, and avant-garde in with uh, Johnny Cash, you know. Right. We, we just sort of threw it all into the same stew, and uh, it kind of led to the name of the band. We, at one point, we said, well, what, what kind of music is this we're making? We got together and sort of write songs, and uh, at some point we decided that it was cracker soul music. And, nice. Uh, I kinda, it started off as a joke, and then we wrote a song. I had a piece of music, and I handed it off to David, and he wrote a song. He wrote lyrics around it, uh, the song Cracker Soul, which kind of became our little theme song. It was very tongue-in-cheek, as most of the things we do are. Right. There's a, there's a, a sense of humor in Cracker that's been at the very beginning. Uh, and uh, so we became Cracker, and we didn't even have a band at this point. We just sort of uh, started writing songs, and we found ourselves luckily and happily with a record deal from a, a bunch of big stack of uh, demo songs we, we, we put together. And of course, Cracker Soul is the uh, the official website there, and you know there's so many to get in touch with you. I mean, you have your your own band as well, and David has his own band. You guys are really out there everywhere. Uh, yeah, we stay pretty busy. We're uh, sort of at the center of this big family of uh, musicians. Um, we're sort of, it's, 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 it's sort of like Parliament Funkadelic, but like, a, like the white boy version of it. Or something. Yeah, right, and we've had them on the and, show uh, as well. So Yeah, a lot of offshoots. And, you know, David uh, and uh, Camperman Beethoven reformed about, about 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, maybe not, yeah, maybe about 10 years ago, and so they do shows here and again, and uh, I think they're working on some new material now, uh, and we've kept Cracker going for, this is our 20th year, and uh, I'm happy to see all, age, all ages uh, represented in our fan base. It's kind of like a miniature, uh, like what the Grateful Dead had back in the day, where it's just sort of a community. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they they uh, they put together their own websites and fan pages and things um, all over the world, and they call themselves crumbs a lot of them call themselves crumbs but the <laughs> they themselves. We, didn't, we didn't give them the name right but uh it, it is it's, it's kind of adorable they 
calling themselves crumbs, and there's a there's crumbs UK, there's crumbs Spain, uh, wow, crumbs US, crumbs East Coast, crumbs West Coast, and they sort of form these little collectives, and uh, and that's, that's really near and dear to our heart. And so we we uh, and they're they're very much involved with, with spreading the word. You know, I mean, in this day and age, I mean, not so many people buy music as they used to. So you really got to rely on. Um, having some pretty cool merchandise at your shows. We, we, the, the, the real way to, to stay to stay uh, current and to stay, uh, you know, in, in the public eye is to just keep creating music that's innovative and don't keep repeating yourself. Which we, we ch- as, as our fans know, we change up a little bit with every album. We we'll no do different musicians. Right. All of a sudden, there's a hillbilly song that goes launching hmm. off into a Pink Floyd jam, or there's, a, you know, I mean, we don't we don't stick to the usual thing. I mean, it's it, it, I guess you could always. You could always file it under rock, but that'd be that'd be a pretty pretty close uh, maybe in some of the songs. Mm-hmm. We just we just write what's in our what's in our what's in our heart and what's in our bloodstream at any given moment and, and put it out there. And we don't underestimate the intelligence of, of our fans to uh, understand that things are going to constantly have and flow with this band. And yeah, you are very diverse. And I was going to you, you kind of touched on this a little bit, and I was going to mention this as well. You've done numerous albums where you've done a theme and and kind of taken it a little bit out of the box where you know country sides where you covered all country albums or country songs right. and then uh oak oak cracker where art thou is just amazing i'm telling you oh thank you that's i mean it's just so fun to hear those songs done like that and fun well said it is i mean it's fun and it but you respect it at the same time because there's so much musician you know musician musicianship and talent flowing <laughs> around that so i mean what is it just is it just because of the random influences on the band that causes you to do this, or was it just something yeah, you guys are? Yeah, we leave a little bit of that out to fate. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the album uh, "Oh Cracker Where Art Thou," and that's and I live in Colorado, and we're uh, the, the two main the, the, the two biggest music here are punk rock and uh, and sort of jam grass. Yeah, it's got to be jam bands. The psychedelic uh, sort of bluegrass jam, these right. bluegrass jam bands, leftover salmon being sort of the kingpins of all that, and uh, we got to know them and. Uh, they dropped by our studio in Richmond for two days, and we made that album of all songs that David and I had written, um, done in a jam grass style with the banjo playing the teen angst riff, and we just let them go to town on it, and they just they just went. It was crazy, you know. We, we did not even make music for two days straight and slept a little bit, you know. And uh, and I'm very pleased with the results. And uh, as as it turned out, it was it, it's one of the most ever salmon fan bases uh, favorites too. So. You know, that's how uh, they spread the word. You, you kind of throw the net over each other's fan base a little bit. You know? So, do, um, do you feel yeah, like people, that's... people ask me sometimes what the average, what is your average uh, cracker fan? That's 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 I could, It's really hard to. Uh, you know, the, the the one uniting uh, factor that I I've, I've always sensed is a slightly twisted sense of humor. Right. <laughs> yeah. On, you know, it has nothing to do with their, their their politics or their age group. Or, and they're not all crackers either. Yeah, well, that's, well, definitely not. We have a huge fan base in Canada. We have a huge fan base in Spain. Right. We do. Uh, we do. We do good business in Spain. We probably have more fans per uh, per capita there than we do in the states. Even we, we'll go really? to entire tours in Spain. Wow. Um, which is yeah, best food, and most wonderful people in, in the world. It's, it's always a pleasure. We go there almost every year, sometimes twice a year. Your guitar is just incredible, man. When I hear that that riff from uh, you know Teenage X, you know Teen X, I. It takes me back, you know. It's, it's just one of my favorite songs of all time. The riff and, from Sweet Thistle Pie. Oh yeah, is, that's I, a great I love one. that. That's I really do. As well, across the board with Ian the Colonel here talking with Johnny Hickman from Cracker, and and I have to say, Johnny, you actually owe me a ticket to a show. And here's why I say this: Uh-oh. back in I think it was '94, you guys were touring with Spin Doctors and Jim Blossoms. And you were supposed oh, yeah. to come to our area, and I think your bus broke down or something like that. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, we didn't get to see you. I was so bu- – it was funny because I was most stoked about you guys. My sister was with me. She was stoked about Jim Blossoms, and a friend was with us. They were stoked about uh, Spin Doctor. So everybody was like, sweet. And I was like, no, Cracker. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the entire arena, when they announced uh, – you, you were rooting for the underdog. Yeah, yeah. At that time. Yeah, they came over the the uh, PA in the arena, and they were like, uh, Cracker's not going to make it. Uh, their bus broke down or whatever it was, and uh, the whole crowd just went, oh. So I uh, never had the chance Sorry to see that. you. No, no, I'm totally kidding. So uh, circumstances, yeah. You better believe it. I'll, 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 I'll have to get to 
<laughs> yeah, we'll have to uh, check you guys out live sometime. So, but uh, you and all six thousand other people. That <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be in the area it's soon be a long too. Guess so. with- I'll tell the promoter, sorry, it was their idea, man. They demanded it. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know how many hold that place holds probably thirty thousand or so. But uh you know, let's talk about you have uh you know some solo albums out as well and your recent ones what I have an album called Palm Hands came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. And, uh, I put it out a uh, very tiny little label and uh, you know, David was back uh, with the Campo Van Beto and at the time I said, Well, I'll occupy myself making music. Uh, for a little bit while, while Campo makes a new record, which was, I'm a huge Camper fan, so that was that, that was awesome. But I found myself a little downtime, so I made this album, Palm Hinge, and uh, happily it got reviewed by major publications. I don't even know how they got it in the UK, and I don't know how they got it at the, the Village Voice, but they gave it Voice's Choice. And nice. It, it really it really did okay, and uh, Kim Stan is doing all right. And David, at, at long last, has finally made his first solo album after working with both Cracker and Camper for all these years. Uh, he has an album called The Palace Guards, which came out a few months ago, and uh, it's a fantastic album. And when you listen to it, you really can see where uh, it, the songs on it are really, really, truly, they're, they're very Lowry-esque, you know? And uh, and they're, they're songs that he felt didn't quite fit uh, either band, and they're a little more uh, just his, his personal vision, and it, it's a great record, and uh, it's doing well. And, and, and uh, now we, we just took a trip, you know, up to the Upper Peninsula up in Michigan and did, did a show up there. And on the drive up and back, we're sort of plotting and planning for uh, the next Cracker record, what we're going to do, which uh, sort of direct, what do, we, what do we feel? We always start with, uh, when it's time to make another record and start working on it, we always kind of ask ourselves, okay, what's, what's the missing vitamin? Uh, what, uh, what, what do we feel a deficiency in? And we'll just start moving in a direction and well start said. coming up with a certain kind of flavor of songs, and that'll just sort of get us in the door, and then, and then all hell breaks loose, and we just start making music, and yeah, that we go from there. And then uh, we say, well, who would be good for this song? Who could we pull in to play with us on this song, you know, or that song? And, uh, but yeah, we do uh, we do other projects as well. I've got a, a, a it actually came out, uh, this is coming out this week, uh, okay. a side project. I started, I for a while I played country in up around the Bakersfield area. I was really okay. always, mm-hmm. even though I was a punk rock kid, Yep. Dave and I both were, uh, you know, around like 1980 or so. We were playing punk rock, and we were the bands like X and uh, the Minutemen and all these uh, L.A. punk bands. And, but we'd sneak off uh, and listen to our Johnny Cash records. And <laughs> we've always, you know, always been uh, really into country because we both grew up on military bases okay. across the South as kids. And then we met out in California, you know, and, and, in the, and in the sea of hipsters there, we would go off and listen to our Leonard Skinner as well as the Pixies or as well as, uh, you know, uh, Captain Beefheart, or whatever the, whatever the hell else we were listening to, and it all just became uh, you know a, a blend in our minds. We didn't separate one genre from the other, which explains a lot of Cracker sound. But right now, I have a I have a band called the Hickman Dalton Gang, and it's very uh, kind of late seventies Waylon Jennings, uh, Johnny Cash style country. And uh, we have nice. a, a record out that just came out. You know, we, we, Dave and I both stay busy. I mean, we, there's not much downtime. We are we're either involved with production with somebody or uh, you know, co-writing with somebody, having you know, playing on somebody else's record, or uh, putting out side projects, and then I think that keeps it keeps things vital. It keeps us moving ahead and reinventing ourselves constantly. Yeah, and speaking and of keep... speaking of projects, what about uh, the Camp Out project, the festival that you guys have now? I know you have a Western version and now an Eastern version of that, and that's a a festival concert that you guys created, correct? Yeah, it's uh, this been going for seven years now, and uh, it's been. Up to up to this year, they've all been out in uh, in the Joshua Tree area, in uh, the desert in California, right. which is actually very nice around September. It's nice and cool, the nice breeze, right. and it's uh, very comfortable. Yeah. Uh, but it's near it's near where we grew up. We're we're kind of uh, honorary desert billies because we spent most of our formative desert years billies. out there on the edge <laughs> of civilization out there. And uh, so we do our festival. It's called the uh, the, the Cracker Camper Van Beethoven Camp Out, and. Uh, you know, this is our seventh year. But this year, uh, a few weeks ago, we threw our first East Coast camp out, and it was a smashing success. Mm-hmm. We did it with a band called Sons of Bill. Uh, it was out in Virginia, right? It was in Virginia. Yep. And it was really, really fun. The first day we got there, it was a torrential downpour, and we thought, okay, well, that could uh, that could uh, throw a wrench into things. But then it, then it, then it just changed to just a slight little, little drizzle. It was kind of on and off the whole weekend, and it cooled everybody down. And it, was, it was actually wonderful. We had a, a really nice turnout. It's a long way to go for us for our East Coast fans to come all the way to the California desert every year. That's a, they got to take time off of work. 
maybe find a babysitters or, or, or you know, maybe some of the young ones don't have the, don't have the cash to make a road trip all the way out there for a week. Right. So uh, the East Coast Camp Out is going to be an annual event as well at Crows of Virginia. And it's sort of central to the South and the, the, uh, in the New England area. In the, yeah, it, it went really, really well, better than we expected. So we, you can expect two camp outs at, uh, from us every year from now on. And yeah, we have a lot of other bands play, and with uh, Cracker and Camper play, and some of our side projects. You know, sometimes I'll do a solo show. David did a solo show this time, and uh, traditionally David and I usually do uh, the acoustic Cracker, which is just the two of us. Right. And uh, he plays acoustic, and I play electric. It's not very acoustic. People say, "Oh, you're doing that unplugged thing." Well, I'm not unplugged, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm completely electric, and. And uh, the way David plays rhythm guitar is very rhythmic. I mean, he spent part of his childhood in Spain, so he's got this really rhythmic pounding, almost like a drum sound, Mm -hmm. the way he'll beat the guitar as as he's picking with his fingers. And so he's the rhythm section. And I play uh, guitar over that. And uh, it's not that different from a live cracker show. It's just that we do it all with our hands instead of with the drums and bass. Those are a lot of fun, too, and those get better all the time. The fans fans really appreciate that because when it's... Well, it's just David and I, I and mean, we'll, we'll, we'll pull anything out. And we'll uh, do songs that we don't do with the band. We'll do brand new things we're working on. Uh, you know, it's a little more free form and, uh, and a lot of fun. But, of course, we do the hits, too. Right. We're one of those bands. i got to point this out. that uh, You know, in, in the music world, um, I've always sort of viewed Cracker as, uh, I, I term us as semi-hip, you know, because the, the real hipsters, you know, they, they think they're too cool to even do their hit two years after they come out if they get a happen because they're lucky enough to get a song on the radio. Mm-hmm. You know, they're too cool. They're on the, the next thing, and they're not really thinking about their fans. But uh, you know, I, I, I take issue with that. I think if you're lucky enough to get a song on the radio, uh, you should you should play those songs live. You can mutate them and change them a little bit and, and change which ones you play. But you should have that much respect for your fans and also for the fact that it may be somebody's first cracker show. Right, uh, and they'd probably like to hear something that they're familiar with, you know, that they can hang, you know, <laughs> you know, hang their heart on a little bit and, and get involved with. Uh, so we always play our radio songs, and uh, sometimes we'll throw in an odd cover, or like I said, something that's sort of in the works. We'll try it out on 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 the, on the fans before we go record it, you know, and just sort of let it mutate on the road. And so on and so forth. I'm just rambling here. You can stop me at any time. <laughs> go ahead, Colonel. Um, you're you're going to be in Annapolis as soon too. This is relatively close to us. And what what kind of show yeah. can we expect from that? Is that going to be like like you were just describing, where uh, David's going to have the yeah? Is yeah. he going to have the acoustic for that, or is it going to be the full on the full on show? The Rams Head uh, is just one of our favorite 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 venues. It's just, it's a small intimate place. Yeah, very. But I like it a lot because everybody at the, who who comes to see us at the Rams Head has a great sound system. And anywhere in the, in the room, you can see pretty well, you can hear pretty well, because right. the stage kind of projects out into, into the room a little bit. That uh, uh, The Rams head is uh, July 17th, Sunday. There it is. There it is, the Rams head. Yeah, that's full band. That one's full band. Nice. nice. So, uh, yeah, we do it uh, as duo, we do it as full band, and both work really well. Yeah, I had to check, because we play, we play 200 shows a year quite often. So, wow. Uh, <laughs> That's incredible. That would... Cause in, in a place like the Rams said, we could, we could do we can either do duo or full band. So mm-hmm. this is going to be full band. So. That's you... going to be a good birthday yeah. present for me to go to that, too. Yeah, that's a good, oh, point. good. Yeah. That's the day after the Colonel's day, birthday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Make that happen. All these years you guys have been on the road, like you said, 20 years. I can't believe it's been 20 years. I, right? I, that blows my mind. Uh, but it's it blows gonna... my mind, too, sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'd, I'd imagine, brother. I'll tell you. But uh, have you, what's the craziest thing you think you've ever asked for in a contract rider? Uh, you know, it, it's funny. I, re- I look at some of other bands, uh, backstage writers, and what they what they ask for. And sometimes it's very practical. Sometimes it's just insane. Ours, right. ours is, is, is so boring. It's just basically, if it's just Dave and I, we just want uh, maybe some chips and hummus and some juice. And, and it's, it's very it's very stripped down. Pretty chill, yeah. Uh, there, there was a one point in time where, um, you know, we, at, at a time we would do, you know, three weeks straight without a day off and we would ask for socks you know <laughs> everybody that is says a that. common <laughs> request there's no place to do laundry out there man okay yeah, but get socks and underwear man i was gonna say Everyone that's my question socks. that's my question johnny because so many people have said socks but nobody said underwear until you and that's my you know if there's nowhere to well, do laundry hygiene are they, what kind of example are they setting <laughs> this for is, the youth of america this Come is on, what man. i'm saying this is what i'm saying <laughs> no my man. free balling out there right exactly <laughs> I, hey i 
what's it like on stage? I don't know. Maybe you need the, the breathing room. I don't know. Uh, Johnny, <laughs> if if you had if you knew you only had say ten minutes left on Earth, what one song would you want to be the last one that you hear or perform? It can be yours or anybody uh, else's. It requires some thought, which I only have ten minutes, so I don't have a lot of time for thought. Oh, take your time. We're good. <laughs> uh, probably whatever uh, is the newest one I'm, I'm working on. Okay. Because I would feel good. It would feel like I were leaving as I was creating, and that, that would feel good. I, I like would, that. Uh, yeah, that's... perfectly fine leaving this world uh, during or after a show in my in my old age. You know? That's a good way but, to go uh, out. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to be working on, uh, not to sound self-centered or, or selfish about it, there's a lot of beautiful music that I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, but I think it would feel good to be working on whatever uh, I had on the on the uh, on the operating table, you know, sure, whatever stage it was. Because it's, it's coming from your heart. Yeah, yeah that yeah, makes sense. Know, and, well, then, have, you, how about this? Then, if you could only play, you know, we talked about how iconic your guitar riffs are, and, and they truly, oh, truly, truly, true. I mean, but it's you know, we're not sucking up. That's absolutely true. Uh, what if you were forced to only play one Cracker song the rest of your your time? What would that be? Hmm. It might be a toss-up between a song called C.D. Easy. Okay. Uh, the Fade and I have. It's got a very central, eerie guitar melody. Or uh, maybe Cracker Soul, because that sort of typifies sure. a lot of ways. It's got, it's got the funk, it's got the southern thing, and it's, the whole song is built around my guitar wrist and that song, which is sort of plucked, and it's somewhere between country and, 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 and funk, you know? Right. Colonel? Oh, yeah, it's a Cracker Soul would be a good one. Colonel, what's your favorite Cracker song? I think I'd say Teen Angst. I am, I'm Maybe Sweet Thistle low. Pie. See, it I, is Sweet I, Thistle Pie. I, I you. love yeah. that riff, man. I, I can't. It, it's just one of those great riffs. How did you come up with that, Johnny? Is that you just sit around playing and, hey, this sounds cool? Or, you know, do you hear something in your head and then, then rip it out? The Teen Angst riff? Either or one. Sweet Thistle Pie riff. he's talking about. Any, any of them, yeah. How, how does that come to you? Well, uh, the, the Teen Angst riff um, started off, you know, David was telling a story and he was kind of finger picking it was actually was kind of writing it like a folk song and uh, at some point I picked up a slide and started doing that that, that, that riff to answer and on an initial demo it's on a slide guitar and then uh, I thought oh it would rock a little harder I just you know I just really dug in yeah so then it became the slide the uh, and I do a, I do a whole complete uh, different sort of take on it when we do the duo right with volume 12 it's, 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 it's the riff is kind of close, but it's funny. Within the first three notes, people know what it is, which makes me very, very happy. Um, yeah, so that one, uh, the story came first, or he had most of the story, and then I worked on a little bit of the lyrics with him, the teen angst, but he wrote the, the, the majority of them by far. Uh, and the riff sort of just weaved in and out of it, and it became sort of the answer. As, as David as David puts it, you know, Cracker songs, like Johnny gets up there and makes his, makes, makes his racket, you know, he does his thing, and then I, then I talk some <laughs> and then Johnny plays his, plays his racket again, then I talk more and then we do it both at the same time. And I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Which is kind of, that's kind of, the, kind of the truth. Now, low is a whole different deal. Low, the music kind of started, the music started first. I was at a hungover sound check uh, <laughs> at, uh, in Portland, Oregon, at a place called Luna, years and years and years ago. And uh, it was just, uh, I've been listening to a lot of Middle Eastern music, and uh, uh -huh. a, a singer called Chad Collette in particular. And uh, they're really getting into the Middle Eastern scales where they, they utilize notes, sort of, I call them the notes between the notes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that guitar riff you hear in low was just, I was just sort of sweeping it back and forth. It had some of those uh, tritones and it had some of those uh, notes that aren't in the, uh, just the standard major Western scales. Right. And I was sort of playing the riff over and over and trying to get something out of it. And, uh, and David got up on stage and had his acoustic guitar and he was, he was trying different chords under it and over it and he said, oh, I like that you know he was he, he tried to do a couple of different patterns of chords and the bass player joined in and uh, luckily they were recording uh, at the soundboard and we got a little piece of it and uh, just through that whole dreamy beginning the whole intro before the vocal start we had that we had to never the other parts down but uh, it's basically the same four chords going underneath all these different riffs that I do on a song and uh, a couple of days later David started on the lyrics and uh, I mean, within a day or two, he had them, and it was just, it blew me away. It was so quick. And I love the lyrics. So people ask us all the time, you know, are you, are you tired of playing low? I'm still, I'm not tired of playing low. I really like low. 
Nice. And, like, well, a lot. and that's just because it bought me my pickup truck, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm still driving. Um, nice. But because, uh, yeah, I don't throw anything away until it's broken. You know, I'm not, you know, out there with the, with the latest this or that and the other thing. I, I, I keep it till it breaks. I, keep, I wear my boots till the heel falls off. You know, I'm one of those kind of guys. That's the way to go. You're but, down uh, to earth. Yeah, low. Um, and it's, it, I love the lyrics to it because uh, the lyric, it, it's, it, it's vague. You can tell if there's a girl involved. It's, it's very sensual. But he's not very specific about what's going on behind me. You know, I don't even want to ask him. It's one of those songs where I'm, I'm such a fan of David. That I don't want to know what the sheet of behind the green sheet of glass means. Right, <laughs> a million miles below their feet, a million miles green sheet of glass, you know, and uh, green green are her eyes. You know, it's got a romantic feel, but there's a mystery there that I don't I don't need to have solved. That's a, I, I think it's a good idea not to it, 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 to explain your lyrics to to literally anyway. We that people right. uh, sort of finish the story in their own minds. I yeah. mean, I'm always uh, very satisfied with that. And uh, you know, sometimes I've heard people explain. Uh, what a song is about, and I'm a little let down. I'm like, oh, I, I, it wasn't bad in my mind. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> you ever get that feeling? Absolutely, all the time. But no, I, I like that, yeah. you know, because we've heard a lot of people say that. Colonel. Yeah, we have heard people say that a lot. And I'm curious about something. I heard, now I know you guys did the uh, Good Times, Bad Times for Encomium, the Led Zeppelin tribute album. Uh-huh. I heard you guys did When the Levee Breaks originally. We and, did a killer version of When the Levee well, Breaks. I, yeah, I heard it was too they, weird, right? I, I I want... It was really, well, yeah, it was a little weird. We, we sort of took it even farther into the swamps than it was. <laughs> and I played harmonica through, some, through a, a, some, some guitar effects, and it ended up, we made it sound like howling banshees or something. <laughs> uh, and, but it, it, was, <laughs> it was pretty eerie. And David's voice is so different from uh, Robert Plant. Right. So he, he's singing with his gritty voice. <laughs> is it available anywhere? Really gave it a, gave it a different take. And, it... uh, is the is the track for that available anywhere at all? You could probably hunt them down somewhere because I've heard it. Uh, I don't know where you would find it, but uh, I, I have heard, I've heard the fans have it somewhere. It's somewhere, somewhere, somebody from some studio somewhere got a hold of it, and uh, huh. that's usually how those things happen. You know, that's how you hear out taking right. things, and then uh, as long as the artist later on to say, you know, I, that is kind of interesting. Let me get that and put it out officially, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. Yeah. We'll have to try to uh, get that from maybe your your one year of your management or something like that. That'd be uh, nice to hear. Do you, or even, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I've you... heard uh, there have been fans show up at shows and, uh, you know, I've sat in cars with people and they go, yeah, yeah, we really love this. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't own it, but uh, I'm glad you do. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> right. They, our fans, are, the crumbs, they pass these things around to each other and, uh, and I think that's very cool. They have live versions of things where we sing different lyrics and, you know, and or, or, or extended versions of things, and I'll listen to it and think, wow, what was this? <laughs> oh, there's this festival in Florida in, uh, in, in, in 1997, you know, interesting. That's incredible. Yeah, uh, yeah, we actually changed the name of that song before we put it on the record. Yeah, I know, that's what's cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> They're like your historians yeah, as well. Right. Yeah, it's really fun. So, yeah, at the last minute, uh, um, the, uh, I was surprised, uh, we were surprised to, to find out that Good Times, Bad Times was still available because that was one of the very, very first uh, Zep songs. Zeppelin hits, yeah. Zeppelin radio songs, at least in the UK. I don't know where they got on the radio in the US or anything, but um, maybe a little bit. And it was still available. So, oh, we can, we can make a meal out of this. But again, we went into the studio and did it in about two, two hours or something. Just, and then we just slammed it, learned it, slammed it, recorded it, got out, you know? Nice. And, uh, and uh, I hear that they were pleased. Uh, hey, nice. And, 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 Robert and Jimmy were, were pleased with it, and that's always a high, high compliment. Absolutely, I mean, we, it is. We did, a, we did, a, did the song "Rainy Days and Mondays" um, <clears throat> for a Carpenters tribute, and our Ooh. version could not be more different than theirs. It was really dark and really you know, We all laid on our backs to record our parts for it, right? And you can hear it. It's just like it's just really lazy and spooky and sort of a comic. <laughs> and nice. uh, the writer of the song, this guy Paul Williams, is a well-known songwriter. Uh, sent a letter to my house in Los Angeles. He said, that is the closest anyone's ever come to the true meaning of that song. And wow. So that, that, song's, that song's a really dark down song. And, you know, people do, people do versions of it and it, it sounds almost peppy. And that's, that's kind of closer to what I meant when I wrote it. I wish I did. I think that was a huge compliment as well. Yeah, that's an incredible yeah. story. We would just try to go to do a 180 and have some fun with it. And, 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 oh, you want to do a Carpenter song? Okay, well, we're going to really crackerize it, so... <laughs> Crackerize it. Anything, anything goes, man. I like that. Like you know, like you said, you had fun with it. And and Colonel, you said that well as you know. Yeah. Earlier that that 
honestly, your music is fun. I mean, it's it's appreciated musically, but it is fun too. I can always put you know Tina Angst or one of those songs on low and just. And just, you know, kind of escapism with it. And, and we really love it. I'll tell you, Cracker Soul is the website. And, uh, you know, check out Johnny with Cracker. They're on tour right now. David Lowry. You has, have us on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, Facebook, right? I'm sure you guys are everywhere. Palace Guards out, is out now. David Lowry's uh, album. And then the uh, Hickman Dalton Gang uh, is out as well. You know, you do a lot of stuff with that. So you have your own thing. You're, you're everywhere. Uh, but, Johnny, we really, really appreciate the time. And uh, definitely go see Cracker. I'm going to make it happen this time. I'm going to come to you guys this time. I missed right, you last time, you so we're looking forward to it. This is Across the Board here on uh, with Ian the Colonel here on AcrossTheBoardRadio.com and HawkRadio.org.